Hi, Carl here for ProV TV, and today we're taking a look at Swit's very exciting new affordable little monitor. This is the CM55C, and this is essentially Swit's entry level into monitors. But the reason we're so excited about this is because in our lineup of monitors, this sits right at the bottom at the most affordable end, and yet is incredibly feature packed. This is a tiny little 1080p 5.5 inch monitor, which has full waveforms, vector scopes, false colors, um, 3D LUT support. There is an awful lot of professional features going on in this tiny and very affordable little monitor. The display itself is a 1080p LCD panel that's 5.5 inches and 450 nits bright. It's actually an IPS display, so it doesn't change color at all as you move around it. Even from this extreme angle, I can see the image perfectly clearly. It's very, very sharp because it's a 1080p display on such a small little panel. And so the focus really does pop. It's very easy to focus with. I think that's gonna be one of the main differences that people actually notice stepping up to an external monitor like this if you're used to only using the little monitor at the back. Having a 1080p display on a slightly larger monitor really does help you get critical focus. As for colors, it's not color accurate, but then nothing at this price point or really any on-camera monitors actually are, and I think it does a perfectly reasonable job. There's only one input and no outputs, so this is the end of the line in terms of a video signal, and it's a full-size HDMI 1.4 input. So that gives you a HDMI signal uh, up to 4K 30 or 1080p 60. The 3.5 millimeter headphone socket on the side is great for monitoring your audio, and the SD card slot is used for lookup tables or for doing any firmware updates that might be needed. The battery slot on the back is actually double-sided, which is a really nice feature. It's normally reserved for much more high-end monitors, but it gives you the choice of using either small little Canon LP6 batteries to power it for a really small, lightweight, thin profile, or Sony MPF batteries for longer run times. And that's particularly useful when partnered with the DC output. Buy one of Switz's little dummy battery adapters and you can use that DC output to power the camera. So both the camera and the monitor can be powered at the same time from just that single battery on the back of the monitor. The last little power input is a USB connection. This is purely for powering, and it means that you can use a little USB bank if you want to, to power your monitor. And that has to have a five volt or a 1.5 amp output. Swit have made some huge changes to the user interface on this monitor from their previous monitors. And this all revolves around this new little red joystick here on the side. This is how you control all of your menus, change all your settings, activate those tools, etc., etc. So you, with just on the normal screen, if you push up, you can quickly jump in and then move it around your image so that you can check your focus and then jump back out again. If you tap it once, you get into your, um, which tools you've got enabled. So you can see with icons here, the green ones are enabled and the gray ones aren't. We can add these, with, add ones to this list with that little plus symbol down there. This is where we get the entire suite of tools that are in this monitor. We've got our frame guides at the top. We've got our exposure tools, things like false color, zebras, histograms, waveforms, and vector scopes. Then we've got our focus tools like focus assist and peaking, our lookup tables, our audio meters, and any imagery scaling that we might need to do. And once we click on any of those, we add them to this list here on the side, and we can just quickly toggle them on and off by clicking on them and going in and changing um, the actual settings of them in here. So with one, we're in peak focus assist here, we can change the color of it, we can change the strength of it, we can change whether the background is black and white, and so on and so on. And what this is effectively doing is it's adding or taking away tools to a scene. You see this number down here in the bottom left? That is which scene we're in. And on the normal screen, if we scroll left or right, we go between scenes. So I've got this first one set up to just be a lookup table. This next one is the, is the waveform. And this third one is blank. So to add something to the scene, we need to come in here. We need to add a new tool. Let's add our zebras 
and then we need to activate it. And now we've got zebras on this scene. To add a new scene, you hold right on the joystick for a while, and then it gives you the choice to add a new one. So we've just added number four here, and then we can add something new to this and quickly toggle between them by scrolling through them like that. If you hold down to the left for a while, you enter your settings menu. And this is where you can control all the actual settings of the monitor. You've got your volume for your headphones, your backlight, rotations, anamorphics. This has full anamorphic de-squeeze options, loads of different options for different types of anamorphic shooting there. You've got your scaling for DSLRs, calibration lookup tables, firmware updates, your lookup table files and factory reset. So that's how you get to your actual menus. So for those of you just getting started in video and you want to take advantage of video tools like waveform, false color, peaking, anything like that, or for those of you who are used to those features on higher end monitors, but are in the market for a small little affordable lightweight monitor, maybe for gimbal work, anything like that, I think the Switch is gonna be a fantastic choice. But let me know what you will think down in the comment section down below. And if you want to pick one up for yourself, of course, the links to our site are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.